Yeah, good again. It's uh, Charlie ZL2, Charlie Tanga Mike. Um, just wanted to um, start another project, and what I'm quite keen to do with this project is to do a video series on the design of a homebrew single sideband transceiver. Um, and what I'm very keen to do, and the whole motivation of this series is to try and, I guess, share some knowledge that I have and, and I'm on the first of it I don't have a huge amount of knowledge but I do enjoy trying to learn and do some of the mathematics behind for example the biasing of of uh, these amplifiers and that so I'm very keen if I can to sort of pass that on and hopefully motivate others to to give a go at um, homebrewing so that's the whole motivation of this this new series it's going to be based around um, I think conceptually this this radio architecture. It's going to be single sideband uh, and I'm very keen to solicit from from you what you might want to see in this to um, to go along. So as an idea, um, I'm thinking about the antenna's going to come in, there'll be some form of um, RF amplifier at the front end. Um, it'll more than likely be a 2N3904 um, common emitter with voltage divider biasing and we can go through the mathematics on that one um, in parallel with that I am keen to do a bit of a 101 if I can and again apologies if this doesn't come out very well but um, LT Spice is a fantastic tool and uh, here's just an example of a previous radio with a, a common emitter amplifier here and then just um, look at the output so the blue line there is the input signal and that's the output across the 50 ohm so that's got quite a bit of dB gain there. So I'm quite keen to go through that because it is a really useful tool for sort of fine tuning um, circuits um, once you've got them made just to, uh, to, to see how well they're going and to tune them. So uh, that, that's, that'll be part of the, um, the series there. So again, so coming in here, that's the, uh, the amplifier. Um, bandpass filter, um, more than happy to have ideas on what band you want this to be on. Um, I might just typically start on 80 meters, but I'm more than happy to, to make this say switched and then we can um, utilize you know, a series of different types of uh, bandpass filters here. So this one here is an old 7 megahertz one, that's that's 14 megs, that's um, 20 meters. So you know, more than happy to, to have ideas here if people want to have this single band or multi band. Um, so yeah, this thing out there. Uh, in terms of the mixer, uh, again, more than happy, you know, I've got, I've got sitting here in the junk box some some mini circuit SBL1s, but uh, then again I'm more than happy to, to do away with that and go towards, say, a homebrew double balance mixer with a diode ring and an input and output um, by follow wound transistors, more than happy to do that. Or if people want to say try and I tried it once and I didn't do it very well, but more than happy to try it again is say the cascaded um, J3 J310s and maybe go for an active type mixer. So again, more than happy to entertain ideas on that one. Um, I will be sticking with the SI5351 from Adafruit. Um, I quite like these little boards; really easy to use. Um, we've got three clock signals coming out of there so we'll have one which will be the VFO and then we'll take this third one here um, which will be the BFO so it makes it nice and easy driving that um, I'll come to it because uh, I am going to use a Teensy in this in this radio um, if I can I'll get the Teensy to drive the 53, 50, uh, SI5351 and I'll come back to that um, otherwise um, I'll be forced to go with yeah, here's our the old junk box, a um, an Arduino. So this is a small little Arduino board. Now here in New Zealand, those are now down to about two dollars uh, with a little rotary encoder. So we'll just see how that one comes, and I'll talk about that in a sec. So again, IF amps. It'll be a similar arrangement to the RF amp coming in. Um, probably three nine zero fours again, but they'll be fixed at the IF frequency, so we can make those um, make those um, narrow band. So we'll see how that one pans out. Uh, for the crystal filter, um, again, just sort of junk, junk, spot, uh, junk box components. So here's a couple of head lying around in the junk box. One sitting at 9 megs and the other one sitting at 3.18 megs. Um, you know, we could look at, say, potentially looking at the mathematics and 
work out which is the better IEF for the type of radio but again um, we can look at using these just in some like I say junk box filters not going to get in the game on this particular radio of of designing a um, a crystal filter um, I'm quite happy just to use these out of the box um, so second mixer it'll be the same it'll be the same architecture as the first one so we don't, don't need to talk about that one Coming through the Teensy, quite keen. I've got a lying around here in the box, um, an old Teensy 3.1. Um, that's got the audio board sitting underneath it. What I want to do with this Teensy is do some DSP. So I'll set this at a, at a standard SSB bandwidth, so roughly what 2.8 kilohertz. And what I'll do with the Teensy, I think, um, and again, I'm you know I, I want to hear back from you guys to see. Um, what you'd like to do, but my thinking is this Teensy here will do some DSP and I'm thinking about doing a notch filter so if you've got any sort of noise coming through the radio we can, um, probably on a screen we can do a, um, a frequency plot, we'll do an FFT and we can see if there's a, a noise and then we can we can notch that out so we'll put a notch filter in and we'll notch, notch out some noise so I'm thinking about doing that um, Again, for CW work, we might look at, say, a 200 and a 700 hertz um, low-pass filters in software. So we can do that. And we can, um, we can do that in software. Uh, and also quite keen to potentially do, well, in fact, I do want to do um, driving an S-meter. So I've got a couple of old S-meters again now, the junk box. Here's one here. Here goes a previous um, hardware-based um, S meter, so again just take the meters out there and we will drive those directly from the Teensy. Um, so I'm quite keen to do that. And the other thing I'm pretty quite keen to do is uh, do some software at the audio um, AGC. So we'll probably look at that as well um, and just control the level here for any kind of varying input uh, levels to, to try and get a more constant output volume through the speaker. And then more than likely, because we're driving an output speaker, we'll have a um, an AF amplifier feeding that. On the transmit side, um, pretty stock standard microphone um, microphone amplifier. Um, back through. In terms of the switching there, uh, probably this time because I haven't done it before, so we'll give it a go. We'll do some diode switching, um, and we'll work out how we can do that either through uh, inductors. To filter out the RF or um, resistors. Again, haven't done that before, so give that a go. Um, and then at the power amp side, uh, probably um, 3053s driving perhaps an IRF um, 520, which has got quite high input capacitance, or a 510. Um, haven't really used those in anger before, so wouldn't mind trying that. Um, I know the 510 has been used quite a bit. Um, and I think, you know, notionally, we'll aim for 5 watts and maybe a bit 5 watts plus around there somewhere. Um, I'm not into high power here, I quite enjoy the, the low power, so we'll look at doing that. Uh, and then some form of output low pass filter, which will also need to be um, switched in line with the, the frequency. So, I think that pretty well covers it. I don't want to make this too long a video. Um, so again, really keen to hear what your ideas are. So please, you know, leave some comments on on what your wish list might be, and we'll try and get some some common thinking there. In terms of uh, the output um, switching between transmit and receive, what I have done traditionally in the past is relied upon because it's just quick and simple, you know, a sort of a big whopping switch like this, which for the low power work that I use works really well. Um, so this is a four pole double, double throw switch so um, three poles are dedicated to RF switching and then one pole is uh, transmit and receive 12 volts which drives the various bits of the circuit. So um, I do have a spare one of those floating around so I could look at using one of those or um, also in the junk box we've got a, a couple of these again um, four pole double throw um, transmit receive relay out of an old radio so uh, might look perhaps to use these um, which is probably a, a more elegant solution and then just have a very simple push to talk to switch either on the microphone or 
um, I quite like the mock switch so um, some kind of simple switch that will switch this over so again more than happy to entertain ideas on that one but uh, we shall see um, and I might have to do some more research into these these are really cheap buck converters so um, uh, 12 volts in 5 volts out or well, in fact it's actually variable uh, I used these some time ago and while they've got really good current ratings you, know, you can I think this is good for if I recall something like 2 amps it was really noisy so um, I might uh, do some more playing around with that to see if they are still RF noise if they are then we'll, we'll get rid of that and we'll go with the linear um, voltage uh, voltage um, oh yeah Throat, tongue tied there. Um, as for the right, the SI5351 being driven, um, the problem I've got here with the old Tensi 3.1 is very few spare pins, um, and the the um, 5351 is I2 squared, and I'm not quite sure if I'm going to be able to get those coming out of um, this board here because those same lines are used to drive the audio board. So if I can, that'll be great because I can have the TNC doing the DSP, but also with the rotary encoder input, I can have it driving the SI5351. So that may be a limitation on this particular device. Uh, I'm quite keen to sort of reuse this because it's just lying around as opposed to, say, going out and buying a new 3.5 or a 3.6. Um, I'm also use what I've got in the junk box. Um, as for the display, I'm probably going to stick with these little OLED displays, um, the beauty of these is they are really easy to use, they're not RF noisy, um, and unlike say uh, a traditional um, LCD, for, 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 for people potentially looking at using these, they can be a real pain to get the Arduino to, to, to dry them. To find the right library to, to make them work can be a real pain, whereas I found with these, just they work all the time, every time with the with the standard OLED library for these uh, 1306, if I recall. Um, there's only a couple of different versions, and that's just in the addressing. Um, so I'll probably go with one of these, and I will with the FFT plot. Um, I'll do a little little frequency plot here. So I think we'll probably get away with that, as opposed to um, making the the project around this. Um, so again, happy to entertain ideas if you think that's a good idea, bad idea, or indifferent. Anyway, this has been going to 12 minutes, so I'm conscious it's getting a bit too long. Um, so, like I say, very keen to try and share whatever little knowledge I have to try and motivate people to do something similar. Um, very keen to hear any ideas on what you might want by way of a wish list. Um, and then we'll try and find some consensus and we'll move forward. Um, and I think that pretty well covers it. So again, very keen to do the maths, LT Spice. Um, we'll do some software engineering in here, so we can uh, we can cover that as well uh, in terms of um, the coding for that. And I'll put put a look at uh, getting a Dropbox of some sort to to share that code. Um, and we can do the circuit diagrams and the like. So that's probably enough for now. Um, thanks for listening, and very keen to hear. And we'll try and make this a uh, a bit of a team design slash project. So uh, I will sign off there, 73s. Um, just letting you know I'll be away for a couple of weeks out of town, so um, I probably won't be able to follow up on this for a short while. But like I say, very keen to do another video series um, on this next project. I'll uh, say thanks very much. See you later, and um, talk to you soon. Bye.